installing this Ergo soft start. Um, I did a video previously where I talked about powering my whole home on a 13K uh, generator. And a big reason that I picked that generator and 13 kilowatts is because I wanted to be able to power my whole house. Um, I don't want to go into a long story, but I have a need to do that. So I wanted to ensure that that generator with its um, total running amps, which is somewhere around 12 kilowatts, is able to power my whole house and more effectively start up this HVAC unit without pulling too much current and drawing, killing the generator. So um, there's a ton of videos out there on soft starts, what they're for, what, what their benefits, pros and cons. Um, my primary concern is to be able to run my home with a smaller or 13K, not one of these larger, more expensive generators. So that's my primary reason. Yes, they are known, or at least the pros are to uh, extend the life of, of the HVAC unit. A lot of times when you hear HVAC units start up, they make that eh, kind of like an instant sort of uh, buzzing noise. They're known to reduce that. Um, and really what these soft starts do is exactly what the name implies. They softly start up or they gradually kick on the components within your HVAC unit. So imagine your compressor uh, would kick in and, and then subsequently your fan motor would kick in. So it doesn't instantly start up all those components at once. Um, I'm sure there's some science behind it within all the circuitry, so I won't get into the details of that. But the whole point is, instead of getting that total inrush current of possibly up to 100 amps or more um, on a four ton or so unit, um, it reduces that significantly. I mean, it could be all the way down to like 15 amps on your startup. So let's talk about a few things first. Ergo provides us with this nice decision tree diagram that helps us appropriately identify the Ergo unit for our compressor size. So let's assume that 90% of the compressors in the USA are scroll, okay? Um, if we follow the decision tree and we go up to the top, which are our scroll compressors in the USA, the first thing we want to determine is the compressor's RLA. That's rated load amps. That's the maximum current a compressor should draw under any operating conditions. Any operating conditions, okay? Often mistakenly called running load amps, which leads people to believe incorrectly that the compressor should always pull these amps. So RLA is rated load amps. That number should be identified on the front of your HVAC unit on the sticker, and I'll show you that a little bit later in the video. And we wanna take the RLA, and we want that number to fit within this next group of numbers, okay? Eight to 14, 14 to 16, 16, 13, you get the idea. Mine was, a, I believe, 18, so I fall within the 16 to 32 amps. So because of that, the next step I'm gonna move on to is determining the compressor's LRA. That's locked rotor amps. That's the current you can expect under starting conditions when you apply full voltage. Often occurs during startup. So what that means is when your compressor starts up, this is that important amount, that inrush current, right, that's coming into your HVAC unit. That is what you want to determine this, this factor with. It's either going to be less than 85 amps or greater than 85 amps. So look at that number on your compressor. In my case, it was 124 amps. So we're going to be greater than 85, which means we're going to pick the 16 to 32 amp air go. So just follow this diagram, pick the appropriate size air go, and you'll be good to go. The other thing I wanted to bring up uh, is Ergo states that it has reverse motor protection. And what that means is it will extend the life of your unit by taking stress off your compressor and also preventing the compressor from spinning in the wrong direction when your generator comes on. So with an Ergo installed, you can run your air conditioning unit during an outage while running on generator power, which is when they sometimes say that this sort of reverse motor protection prevention can be helpful. One of the, one of the things I also wanted to talk about um, with the help of my puppy here is um, determining the, the, a couple key factors for the size of your soft start unit. So on this panel, we've got some acronyms here. Um, one of them is LRA. That is um, locked rotor amps. So locked rotor amps is basically going to tell you the maximum current that you can expect on startup of this unit, okay? So when this unit initially starts up, it's going to start the compressor, it's going to start the fan, everything is starting all at once, okay? So um, that's where you get into problems when you're running generators and to, to power your HVAC units. It's not able to deliver 124 startup amps um, converted into kilowatts, which is, is quite a lot. Um, 
but that's the problem, right? So with a, when we install this soft start, one of the benefits is it staggers the startup of the compressor and the fan, and it'll take that number down from, from over 100 to possibly somewhere around 15 um, is, is the target area that most people get um, or expect out of these units. So that's, that's pretty cool. Now, the other thing is um, we've got a couple other acronyms, and stop biting my hand. All right, <clears throat> we've got rated low damps. So that is the maximum current that you can expect under typical running conditions on this unit. Um, don't get that confused with like running amps. Um, this, is, this is called rated load amps, and that's the maximum current you can expect under typical operating conditions, okay? And then you've got um, full load amps, which is uh, another acronym here. But I believe, uh, if I read correctly, that was changed uh, in 1976 to rated load amps. So they both more or less mean the same thing, uh, just semantics there. So that, those numbers are important. Obviously, uh, watt rotor amps is the one you're looking for and obviously determining your tonnage so you can understand how many kilowatts uh, this unit is drawing. Okay, so before we start on demonstrating how I wired up this soft start, one of the first things I would recommend, um, especially being a DIYer, um, not electrician, not certified, but just doing this for demonstration purposes, is that we, un we pull the power at the switch for the uh, HVAC unit. So pull that, and we can sit that on top, however you wanna do it. But don't just take that for granted, okay? So always have a good meter, good multimeter, and measure the voltage, triple, triple measure the voltage where you're working to ensure, especially with 240 volts, to ensure that you're working with no current. Very, very important. All right, one of the first things we wanna do is we wanna take off this panel. All right, now that we've got our panel off, one of the first things I want to do is I want to check to make sure that there is no power coming into this unit. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check on the contactor. I want to make sure I have no power. Um, also, um, I'm going to use my meter to check. I'm going to wrap that right around the hot leg. And that would typically light up red if I had any current going through there. Um, now, other thing that everyone recommends... Um, and just to make sure that I point that out there is this capacitor could, could uh, still contain a lot of energy. Um, that's, this is typically like a battery, except the fact that it can discharge its energy um, at an extremely fast rate. So it still could be holding some energy. So what you want to do is, is go from common to herm and common to fan. Um, you've got a herm, you've got a common, you've got a fan. Um, the herm is compressor, your, your fan is your fan, and then there's your common. So we just want to make sure that that's grounded out. Um, and then we've got no energy left on that capacitor. Um, and yes, I did touch that because I am confident now that there's no energy at this panel. Um, and, uh, and that's just being safe and, and ensuring that uh, as I'm working, I've always got this meter hooked up here that if any power ever happened to come into here, this is gonna light up red and, and I'm gonna know instantly. So just, just super, super important to always ensure that um, that you have no power in here. Um, and, and again, just use your head, common sense. All right, so once you're familiar with the schematic, we wanna install the mounting bracket. So we wanna find a nice place in there where we can mount the bracket. And you can see that I, I found this nice place on the back panel uh, opposing the circuit, this, um, this uh, br uh, breaker board here. Uh, so yeah, just right on the other side or breadboard, um, sorry, excuse my uh, English there, but um, right on the other side, nice, tucked in, um, it allowed me to run my wire, so make sure you, you hook everything up and kind of, uh, or not hook everything up, but make sure you look at where the wires go, so that way before you mount that bracket, this is one thing I recommend, they kind of say mount the bracket first, um, I don't really see anything in here saying like, you know, check the wire links, you know, where you position it and all that, so if I, would, if I would add one step in here, it would be that I would look, because you only have so much length with these wires and you gotta, you gotta navigate around this thing pretty cleanly. So um, in my case, um, it worked out, but in, in other cases, it may be that you pick a mountain spot and then you end up a little short and then you're gonna have to go, you know, do some, some you know, additional wiring, et cetera, which is just, you know, could have saved you some time and some frustration. So, um, with that said, we've got our mounting spot located and we're good there. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the compressor run wire. Um, typically, it's yellow. In this example, he's saying it's yellow um, from the contactor or terminal. In my case, it was red. Okay, um, so that that wire could that wire that's mounted to your to uh, terminal 23, and that's your compressor run wire. Um, it could be a different color. So remember that, right? So in my case, it's red was not yellow so when you remove that wire the next step is to strip that wire okay and uh it says strip it at least a half inch and terminate the wire into the run wiring terminal on air go so again i took this red wire that was on contactor number 23 i stripped it and actually i put a um a terminal on there and then i um seated it in here and torqued it appropriately again um there's no torque specs on this but again you want it you want it pretty snug just don't break it don't over tighten it um you know uh just common sense there as well so again now that we've got our compressor run wire moved from contact 23 into our run winding we're going to move on to the next step okay <clears throat> Now we're going to take and terminate the brown wire from the ergo to C common on the capacitor. So there's a brown wire which comes out of the middle here. This is your capacitor run. We're going to take that brown wire, which is here, and we're going to terminate it, it right here onto your common on your capacitor. Very, very easy. Nothing to that one. Okay. <clears throat> now the black wire from the ergo to the load side contactor labeled 21, okay? Your black wire to the load side contactor labeled 21. And 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 the load side, what they're talking about is the side that's gonna carry the load, like the, the, the side that is um, getting power, right? Um, there's probably a better term for that. You guys can put that in the comments. Um, but again, these are two contact on two. There's there's four right on this contactor, and then you've got some terminals coming off the side. But the main ones they're talking about are on the top, the load side, and the ground side is 21, and on the hot side is labeled 23. Um, and you can call and you can get some help, or you can you know if you have some questions about that. Um, this this is how it is, it is in my particular case. Um, so now that we've taken um, the brown wire to the to the uh, capacitor, the common. We're going to take this black wire, black wire, right? And it's going to terminate right over here to the uh, uh, contactor 21. And I had an additional uh, tab open. I just pushed it right on there to the um, to the contactor 21, which is the, the ground side. Okay. All right. Now we're going to terminate the blue wire to H on the capacitor. So we've got a blue wire coming off of here and that's just going to simply navigate and work its way around to the herm this is your herm or h you'll see h on there um, and that's your compressor side right there just terminate that simple right nothing to this all right now we want the red wire from the air go to go to the load side labeled 23 okay so that's this big beefy guy here this big beefy red wire um, I had to put a ring terminal on that, and that ring terminal is now terminating where I originally took this red wire off of. So now this is running in line. You kind of see what's happening here? This ergo box is taking over the control of the contactor. So instead of the contactor instantly flipping power on to all, all the components, the compressor, the fan, what's happening is, is when the contactor turns on, the load side gets power, and then it feeds into this uh, ergo box. And now the ergo can stagger the ramp up on uh, the devices within your HVAC, your compressor and your fan, thus dropping or reducing the startup current to your HVAC. That is super, super important. That's where you get the benefits. Um, and that's how you're able to run a lower kilowatt generator powering your entire house, especially your home air conditioner. Um, now, another little tip. Just keep checking that I have no power coming in here. Just a tip, always keep checking. Make sure that you're, you're not working with live, live electricity. Now that we've got the red wire with a ring terminal um, connected to, uh, to our contactor number 23, and we're all seated, we, let's, let's triple check. So always when I'm done, I, I always go back and I triple check. 
these things can always, you can miss one. Um, they can just, you, you never know, right? I mean, you just, when you're working with wires and moving this around, they could loosen up a bit. Um, it happens. So just go back and make sure that these things are tight. Now, um, this is actually a plug, which is nice. Um, this makes it easier to work with. So you can wire this stuff up. You can, um, this, I just wanted you to know that this wasn't fixed to the air go. So that way you can mount this thing and not have to worry about all these wires being or hanging off of it. So that just plugs right in like that, right? Um, that's it. That's it. That's all there is to wiring this up. So now that I've got this um, in here, I'm just going to snap it right into the, the housing. Boom. Just like that. There. So nice and tight, nice and neat. And uh, I will be able to hook up this um, capacitor um, and finish the install by neating up the wires, etc. So uh, let me do that real quick. the things that I really loved is that it is back to small business. And, uh, the reason why I went with this, you know, one of the biggest reasons is because the owner, what I understand is you can call the owner at any time and ask who is a master electrician and ask him any questions you have about this or your wiring. And I wanted to put that to the test. I, I wired this up at seven o'clock on uh, a weekday. And I had one question about the contactor. I just wanted to be sure. Um, I called, he puts his business card in there. I called him and he picked up immediately. I asked him a question. He was very professional and gave me the answer I needed. And, you know, I didn't want to ran on and hold him, but I mean, it was just great. It was a simple, quick call, but the guy picked up the phone and answered the call. And I cannot say enough about how, you know, people support their products. And that is why I love small business, small business. You just, you get that kind of support. Okay. So ergo top notch support and their instructions are absolutely brilliant. Got to air go. So let's power this up. We're gonna open our box. Be very careful. These wires are hot. So we wanna take this and we wanna connect, reconnect our switch. So it only goes in one way. Just like that. Make sure it's seated properly. Make sure your box is nice and quiet. Now you can see that the air conditioner HVAC unit started up nice and quiet. Um, my unit was, was pretty quiet to begin with. Uh, it wasn't terribly loud. Uh, this is a Train XR, it's a fairly new unit, year and a half old. So <clears throat> I didn't have any problems with that inrush of and, eh, but I did have a problem with the generator uh, running my whole house. Um, for me to work, uh, for me to run my software company, uh, all my computers and servers and everything, um, and the HVAC unit, I have to have uh, air conditioning for my servers. So I have a particular case for, for needing to power this, so it's very important in emergencies. If my power's out for a week, that I am able to still work and get uh, have my company uh, running. So, so there you go. If you have any questions about the Ergo Soft Start or any questions about um, you know how I hooked all this up, um, just shoot any comments and I'll be happy to answer. Thanks for watching.